shared a lot of content now on your tweets. Let's go in and, and see why it's not working. You see that, well, actually, they've got about 15 followers. I said, well, it's not surprising, really. It's not working for you because anything you're sharing is being seen by a maximum of 15 people at any one time, and probably not that because they won't all be on Twitter at that time unless they're sharing it. So we need to remember to keep expanding the number of people that we're talking to on a regular basis. Part of the mix. So top to play in social media. Great, it's a lovely place to be for mums, isn't it? If you're out there trying to sell widgets, social media is a little bit more difficult. But you've got so much lovely stuff to talk about. Um, and being female and mums yourselves and being able to go out there and relate to the people that you would like to have as your customers makes life a whole lot easier. So we find it very easy to go out there and chat on social media. It's lovely and relaxed, but we can make it maybe a little bit more efficient for ourselves by using a couple of key tips that I want to share with you today. As I've said, we've got lovely content out there that you're sharing. The one thing I think that maybe Top to Play could be concentrating on a little bit more is to actually get that content out to more people and raise your visibility locally. That way you'll have more impact and that in the end is going to lead to more customers <coughs> for your classes. Don't take that in any way as criticism. I just think you've got such lovely stuff going on. It would be nice if even more people saw what it is that you're doing. So I said I'd talk a little bit about Twitter, and this is where the Twitter stuff comes in. So is everybody here using Twitter? Some yes, some no. I don't want, I'm obviously not in an hour, there's no way I can actually go into the intricacies and how it works. And if you want to get on it and you're not on it already, there are a number of blogs that would tell you how to get on it. If you want me to share any information about Twitter and top tips for actually getting on and using it and getting used to it, I'm very happy to. Again, if you want to bung, if you want to send me an email and ask me for that, I'd be only too happy to send that over. There's lots of really nicely written stuff out there in the ether and I can parcel it up and send it to you. But Twitter is a lovely social network to use because unlike Facebook, where we have our Facebook pages and we have people and pages can't talk to people, on Twitter you can talk directly to people whether you are a person or a business using Twitter. So that's its great advantage. You can get right in front of people rather than having to stay in this sort of very um, sort of rarefied environment as a business page. You can also search really easily for other people who might be great for you to network with or who might be potential customers or who could actually help you to get your name out there. <coughs> very often on Twitter, People are actually there as themselves. They haven't necessarily got a VA going on and doing their Twitter for them because it is such a personal thing. And if people are using Twitter quite heavily, then it's something that they will be on quite a lot. So the chances are it will really be them on there. So you can actually get to talk to people that you might not otherwise ever be able to get in front of because their secretaries or the VAs or whatever would be a gatekeeper in a way. So it is lovely from that point of view. And for a lot of businesses, if they're looking at sending visitors to a website as one of the things that they want to do, and I know you've all got web pages, then Twitter is actually generally much better for doing that than Facebook is, provided you are using it actively and you've got your, your link in your Twitter profile, of course. So I've got just four tips for using Twitter um, in a way that is effective if you go out there and you read the stuff online, you will come across a mountain of tips for using Twitter well in all sorts of different sectors and industries. But I want to really distill it down into stuff that I know works for businesses that I say without being all frilly and fancy. So these are my four top tips and we're going to go into them in a little more detail before we go racing on Facebook, which is probably where a lot of you feel more comfortable. So on Twitter, we need to keep visible. And Twitter is a social network where your posts or your tweets actually have a very short half-life. So you put them up there, but because it's such a busy place, they tend to shoot off the bottom of the news feed pretty quickly. So to actually remain visible on Twitter, we really need to be thinking about 
sharing our tweet, our little snippets, our 140 characters, little and often. So if you can possibly do it three times a day, you're going to get a much better result than, for example, just doing it once a day. However, once a day is better than not at all. So if all you can manage is once a day, then that is also good. But three times a day is lovely. This is going to raise your visibility, as I said. That's going to increase the number of people that look at your profile and from there click back to the web page that you've got in your profile. And at this stage, you could be saying, Julia, can't do that. No time. And I'll be saying, well, actually, you don't have to just be putting your stuff out there. It doesn't have to all be your stuff. You could be retweeting the stuff that other people have shared. You could be finding maybe local news stories or even blog posts that you think might interest your audience on Twitter and sharing those out there as well. Doesn't have to be all your stuff. And even if you're just out there responding to what someone else has said, you're still having a presence there. Has anyone come across any Twitter scheduling tools before? Are you using Hootsuite at all? Mm, when I'm doing Twitter. Right. <laughs> to start off with, it's kind of lax. Oh, okay, that's fair yeah. enough. But it's, if, you want, if you want to use Twitter as something <coughs> to grow your business and you're thinking about trying to ramp up how many tweets you're doing every day, then there is a lovely tool out there. There are a few. This isn't the only one, but there's a lovely one out there called Hootsuite that I use a lot. Not only does it schedule posts, tweets for you, which means that you could write everything that you wanted to go out on Twitter, for example, the next month if you wanted it to, and actually have this Hootsuite program send those tweets out at, on the time and the day that you've asked it to. But it also lays out all your Twitter feed in a sort of very tabulated format, so lots of columns. So instead of just going into your notifications on Twitter and seeing this bundled up mess of everything that's gone on from the way that people have responded to you, Hootsuite lays it all out in really nice, easy to understand columns. So if you find Twitter a little bit overwhelming, but you think that you really would like to try it out, I would encourage you to go and have a look at Hootsuite and just see if that makes it a little easier for you to access. Because on its own, as I said, it can Twitter can just be a little bit messy. And most people actually use Twitter through some sort of third party program now for that reason. But did you find Hootsuite good when you were using it? Excellent. It used to be free. I'm not sure whether it's completely free now or whether it's like five dollars a month or something, but it's pretty well, nice. Yeah. Oh good, excellent. Because they keep just being like not making it free anymore. And of course, when you've got a paid account and you try and log in to just see if it's still free, it just keeps trying to take you back to your paid account, which is what mine is. The other thing to think about with Twitter is to grow your audience. And that's what we were talking about <coughs> earlier on, wasn't it? Obviously, the more people we talk to, the more people who hear our message, then the bigger our impact, the greater our visibility. And how do we go about growing our audience on Twitter? How do we attract followers? Yes, the best way is to follow the kinds of people that you want to follow you back. And in that way, you can actually start to strategically grow an audience of people that you want, rather than leaving it up to fate for people just to find you and randomly follow you. We have to take a bit of action here. So if we go out and follow the kinds of people that we want to follow us back, we can really start to grow our audience quite quickly. And it used to be that 70 or 80% of people that you followed would follow you back. Nowadays, it's probably around 50%. But still, that's not a bad ratio, really, in terms of activity. So how do we find the right people to follow? We've got two alternatives, really, that are the easiest to take on board. One is to use the little search bar at the top of Twitter. Have you ever seen that with a magnifying glass there? So you can either search in there for keywords or you could actually search in there for particular people if you happen to know them by name. Or you could search for people who are tweeting about particular subjects. Or, and I like this one even better, go and have a look at maybe your competitor. Ooh. Or people who've got networks of the right kind of people for you, <coughs> maybe in your local area, and have a look at their followers. 
and start following their followers. It's a little bit of reverse engineering, but it can work really nicely. So this is a screen grab, which for some reason has not come out very clearly. Sorry about that. But I went and had a look at the Calm Birth School, which I think is based Londonish way. But I thought I'll have a look and see what their followers look like on Twitter. So this just gives you an idea. So this is their profile picture at the top that I've chopped off because I wanted to keep as much of this in as possible. They've got <coughs> 600 and odd, or no, 300 and odd followers. No, 600 and odd, isn't it? So you scroll down and down and you get to see exactly who it is that's following them. And then you can read their profiles here and if you decide that they would be good people for you to follow as well, then you just click follow. Now this is on a desktop, obviously on a mobile, it gets squidged in and you just see one column at a time. But it's still the same process. So you can start to pick off people that you think would be very useful for you to follow. And that might not all be individuals that you want to have as your next customer or client. That could actually be people who are maybe working in the same sector, or even better, people who've got the right audience for you, but who aren't competitive with you, who are selling something related but different. So it might be worth thinking about who they could be and then going and finding them as on Twitter. So people who are targeting mums are an obvious choice. How else can we raise our visibility? Let's just talk a bit more, because the more we go out and talk on Twitter, the more opportunities we start to open up. Stands to reason, doesn't it? The more people we talk to, then the more people get to know about us and what we stand for and what's great about what it is that we do, the more we'll be remembered, the more we'll be top of mind with those people. Great opportunities for talking to somebody are if someone follows you, if someone follows you on Twitter, you get a notification coming up in your feed. Or equally, you can set up a column to do that for you in Hootsuite so that you can go in and have a look. So when someone follows you, it's really nice to go back to them and say, thank you for following, have a quick look at their profile. If they look like somebody that really could be useful for you, then go back and say, make a comment that's related to something in their profile, or even better, related something to something they just tweeted out. Because they will then feel very valued by the fact that you took the trouble to go and find out a little bit more about them. And you can very easily start a conversation by asking them a question or commenting on something that they've got up on Twitter. Similarly, if somebody retweets you, if someone goes out and shares something of yours on Twitter to their audience, it's a lovely opportunity to say, thank you for the retweet. But if we just say, thank you for the retweet, that's kind of bland and boring and dull, mm -hmm. isn't it? The other half of that could actually be asking them something related or asking them something about themselves again. And this one is if you're feeling particularly strategic. If having had a little rummage through Twitter, you realise there's two or three key people maybe in your area and you really like to get on their wavelength. You really like to be in on their radar. If they're on Twitter and they're tweeting out regularly, why not do a little bit of stalking and actually watch what they're tweeting and start responding to it or sharing it to your audience? You will very quickly get onto their radar that way, but in a good way, because if you're responding positively, if you're sharing their stuff on, that's all paying them a compliment. Mm -hmm. So it's a really nice way actually to start a relationship that could end up with you meeting for a coffee, for example, and building a working relationship from there. So great things can happen from little tiny seeds that are planted out in Twitter. <coughs> Another way to increase your visibility is to take part in Twitter chats. Has anyone done any of this? Once. And once. Yeah. <laughs> no man and peace from it. Oh, why did you do that? It just it was a little bit overwhelmed. It was like, right. wow, what's it's just a bit scary. Oh. Do you think you might be tempted to do it back? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. I'm sure you could. Now you're a more seasoned Twitter user, you might. 